So, I'm uploading the Spanish video, but you might be wondering, Hey, I thought you did Raspberry Pi stuff, and I just remembered I never up uploaded a video about what I did. So, here it is. Let me just grab the thing I made. Shoot, sorry. I have a lot of stuff on my desk, so everything's just kind of in wires. Hopefully I don't break it while picking this stuff up. Why is the infrared sensor caught on a wire? Okay, so I'm just going to point the camera down at my keyboard so that you can see. However, um, I'm not. I'm definitely not continuing it. Not because I didn't like it, but because I didn't like it. It was because it was too caught. I liked the actual... I liked making it, but then I hated it when... Like, for example, in coding, when you get an error, you know, you just go go ahead and fix it. Here, if you make a mistake, like, you have, like, a 90% chance of breaking your actual component. Like, you might have fried something, and I went through, like, six Arduinos. And, yes, I understand that uh, I the more I get used to it, the, the less errors I, I make, and therefore the less um, components I fry. But, in the end, I cannot afford that. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's like a hobby for rich people. Honestly, I spent a hundred bucks to make a fucking servo connect to an electro board connecting to an Arduino and then powering it separately with a goddamn battery back, which I had to buy in bulk because, yeah, and also have an infrared sensor. So, uh, I have some batteries on my desk from the actual thing I made. Let's see if I can find the fourth one. There we go. So, I'm just going to turn on my camera and point it downwards. So, let's see, capture device, turn it on. So, let's just take the camera. And you can see what I made. So, I have the Arduino board, which I soldered into this electro cookie, which I have jumper wires connecting to um, the battery pack. Uh, I think it was 6.1 volts. Um, uh, at least that's what my multimeter said. So, 6.1 volts connecting to this powering the Arduino along with this 20 kg servo um, which is connecting so the black so the ground and the positive or yeah the ground and the uh, VIN are connecting to the battery pack and not the Arduino so the battery pack is powering the Arduino and the servo via the ground and the VIN cable, but then the the only thing that's actually the only part of the servo that's actually connected to the Arduino is this white cable, which is the um, which is a jumper cable connecting to GPIO port D9, and that's how the Arduino controls it. But if I just put some batteries in here, uh, crap! How do I do this while holding a camera? I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Um, but yeah, so, just putting the batteries in, but essentially, I cannot really afford this hobby. I have an extra Arduino, though, so I might use that. Uh, but I actually think it's really cool, but I just, it's a little pricey for me. Just, even at the beginning, by the time, like, I get used to it, I feel like, um, I, I will have run out of money for me to actually spend, so, um, on this hobby. So, I have this infrared sensor connected, um, and it looks like it's not working because I burnt it out somehow, maybe, possibly. Of course, when I finally record this, this thing's not working. I know we have other... Okay, we have other infrared, but essentially when I put my hand in front of this, it would um, turn this thing 45 degrees. It obviously doesn't work now. I don't know what the hell happened, but I'm just going to take out the batteries now. Um, why is it so laggy? That's weird. Anyways, I'm taking out the batteries now. Turn off the camera. One moment. There we go. And now, on to my project. Actually, I started another project. Not, not. Don't worry, I'm not stopping this project. I started another project as well, just a small one, and I'm not getting fully into it until I'm done with my, um, with my, um, with my game engine. Um, 
So I'm, I'm just going to have to replace the infrared sensor. But again, I just burnt out an infrared sensor. Luckily, it came with 10, but still. Fuck you, still. <laughs> you know, um, I just spent like 50, I spent 100 bucks on this. Anyways, um, so the new project is just a voice assistant. I, I want to try it out. I, I, I want it to be like Jarvis from Iron Man. Um, but I'm naming it Lenny because... My, much like Iron Man, where Jarvis was a assistant of Howard Stark, not Tony Stark, Howard Stark, who passed away. Um, Lenny is my old doorman, who was, he was really, really nice, and he unfortunately passed away from allergy, allergies, yeah, he ate crab and passed away, which I was really sad, super sad at the time, and I'm still sad, but I'm naming him Lenny in honor of my doorman from uh, my old building. Um, yeah. So, anyways, let's move on to the um, engine B. So, what do I... Okay, no, I don't have it open. So, let's open it up. Now, I did a few changes. Um, I believe I already updated the project. Let me just update it again. Press OK. Okay, yeah, all files are up to date. I, I was doing some coding on my laptop. But now, then I just uh, did this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, let me get my laptop because I don't think I pushed that to the origin, the changes I made. But essentially what I did was I... I created a separate class that stores all of the keys right here. So like all of the numer the alphabetic the alphabet, numeric alphabet, the arrow keys, the miscellaneous keys and then the miscellaneous keys which are symbols. Um so yeah, I see, yeah, yeah, I didn't commit the changes one second. So let's commit. So key manager on key pressed on key held and on key release commit and push push that I'm doing this all on my laptop sorry and now if I just go to my computer and update we should Yep, now I have the on key down, on key release, on key held. And all of these work. This is being called by this little test I had here. But yes, everything is working now for the key manager, which is awesome. I also made the animation class, as you can see, so people can make animations. Um, and now what I have to work on is the entity manager. Let's see how long have we been going for. Eight minutes, let's go. Not too long. So let's go over to the entity manager, and I'm modeling it directly off of this entity manager, of course. So we can say, um, we can say, we can just, yeah, we can just copy this over, it doesn't matter. Copy that, paste that, and then go over to this entity class, and let's, um, do this abstract make it abstract and I'm I'm gonna do it like this um, just because uh, there's a few extra features I want to add so let's do be protected protected string name protected string unlocalized name a protected float x and y protected int width and height and protected rectangle bounds and then we can make the constructor public entity uh, we'll pass in the unlocalized name the name, the x, the y, 
the width and the height and then we just initialize everything With passing the height into the bounds through the parameters, make a abstract void tick and render, and then we can have a public void die will be optional, or we can say like like Unity does on destroy, right? And then we can have a um we could have health at you know what now let's leave that up to the to the creator to code that themselves um same thing with the use and then we'll have let's make a protected boolean and we'll call it transparent or no 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 solid and then over here we'll just pass in a boolean solid now let's say is solid and then we can say this dot this dot is solid equals to is solid then we can just make a getter for that. Excuse me. Um, let's make a getter for that so we can say getters. And just say public. Um, public boolean is solid. Returns is solid. And then just do the setters. Public void uh, set solid. Pass in. Whoops. Boolean is solid. We'll say this dot is solid equals solid is solid. Okay, so we've done the is solid. So essentially over here, it's this is like, okay, well, we're determining whether this has entity collision, right? So then we can say, uh, honestly, we can just take this, right? <laughs> right, 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 we don't really need to work on it, do we? Yeah, I didn't think so. Alright, so let's do this bef underneath the on destroy we can just say, uh, entity, oops, entity collision checks entity collision if the entity is is solid as stated through the parameters and initialized in the construct. That was a lot of unnecessary information. X offset, I don't know. Y offset, I don't know. Return, return weather, return statement, um, uh, returns weather, um, the entity weather, the entity has collided with another entity. Perfect. And now we can say now we can say mm, okay where is check entity collision co oh huh Oh, that's because I didn't have any entities. So let's open up my Clinomania project. Whoops, what did I press? Close, pr oh, I pressed close. Okay, so 
Let's do file open clinomania because I know I had worked on entity collision there and it worked really well. Let's run this, you'll see. Yeah, so when we collide with the so we're the player and I made this whole walking animation that I'm very proud of. When I collide with this you can see it works like works like a charm. Anyways, um Sorry. So let's go to check or you know what, how many where is this called? This is called once. This is called there. Oh. Okay, anyways. Check entity collision is in the move for the creature. What do you mean move for the creature? What does that mean? Oh, for the... Okay, so... If... I guess every entity will move or can, has the ability to move, it doesn't have to, right? So, we can say, um, so, okay, okay, let's, let's first make some, let's first document this, turns, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Returns the collision bounds. Um, considering coordinates and dimensions, and then we can just, and then we can do. I mean, yeah, every, we're, we're doing that is solid anyway, so let's just do it here, it really doesn't matter. So we can say, at the, the speed's not even used here, I don't know why that's there. We're going to say, sorry, my, came, my sister came in thinking that my mom was in here, even though I was the only one talking. Anyways, um... So, we're gonna have, um, gonna have to make the protected float x move y move, and then we're gonna have to do that here as well. So, so, so we can just say. Actually, let's put this here because it's giving me OCD, and let's do this dot x move equals to zero. This dot y move equals to zero, and then we'll have a public void move. Public void move moves object according. Uh, according to speed, x move equals x speed, speed, y move equals to y speed, negative, a, neg, uh, you know what, whatever, they can figure it out. <laughs> I mean, it's just regular coding at this point. I was going to uh, specify that negative, having a negative x move will make it move to the left, but, I mean, that's just kind of common sense, right? If not, sue me, war crime, whatever. If, so we can say if. No, we don't have to say if, we can just copy this. Do that. Um, what, what the hell is, oh, that's what it is. Okay, so. Then let's just do copy that, paste there, copy all of these, paste there, setters, go with the setters, getters, Go with the 
getters. Why is that abstract? Well, that should be. That should return X move. I don't know what the hell that was. Um. Okay, so. I think we're all good. Yeah, that should be it. So let's go back to the entity manager. And I forgot to do it. the is active stuff. Okay, so. In the entity. Whoops. We're going to have a. Public void. Destroy, so. Um. <sighs> public abs. Public void. We'll say destroy. And then we can just say. Whoops. Forgot we need an active boolean whatever go up here. Protected boolean active equals to true. So here we can say active equals to false. So then when you actually add that in, all they have to do is do super dot destroy. And then we can just call on destroy, right? <laughs> There you go, and, um, uh, oh, I didn't put the getter in, whoops, and uh, we can say right here, public boolean is active, or we'll return ac active. And then in the entity manager, there that's all fixed. That's not, because we don't have the getters for the X and the Y. So let's just do the getters for all the dimensions. So public int get X return X. That's going to be a float. Public float uh, get Y. Return the Y public. What do you want from me? Screw off. Public int uh, get with return with public int get height public. Oh, forgot to do the return. Also, by the way, if I sound a little mean on camera, that's just my character when I'm recording. I don't know why I do that. Anyways, I uh, get uh, get height. What else did it? Was it? Uh, um. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So let's do that. What do you want? Take render, whatever. Oh wait, no, no, no we actually have to render that. So that is going to be in the engine, right? Yep, the engine, and we'll tick it in the tick method. Key manager dot tick. Where the hell do I tick the key manager? Oh yeah, I tick it in the. You know what? Whatever. And then we can just say. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Entity manager is yeah, it ticks it in the scene. Yeah, so. So what we do is inside of the sample game in the scenes we would do entity manager dot nope that's not right where's this made oh oh what okay whatever oh uh, 
you know what, let's just... Do that. Do that. Import that. We really don't need the name. <laughs> That's unnecessary. We just need the entity manager. However, whenever we create it, we are going to have to pass it into here. So entity manager, entity manager. Right now, this is going to give us an error. Where the fuck is this created? <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to curse. So that's going to be in the game, right? In the pre-initialization. Okay, you know what? First, let's go into the engine. Or, sorry, import this stuff. Create constructor with super. don't need this. Actually, no, we do need that. It's got a problem. Uh, let's see. So let's go into the engine first. Um, and I forgot what I was going to do in the engine. Oh, entity manager. That would go here. Public static entity manager entity manager right oh no it's not static whoops I already have engine B open rebound new window Let's see. Yeah, now I do make it static. Then I initialize in the post initialization sequence. Right? And then I initialize a scene. Okay. And then let's go over to the entity manager. And then I suppose, where is that error? Here's do engine dot entity manager, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all we need to do. Okay. Let's commit this entity manager. I'm too lazy to write a comment. I, I, it's not like I'm gonna look back. Okay. What is the warning? Oh. Oh, I forgot to tick it. Alright. Okay, so let's... So we tick and render it nowhere. What are you talking about? Tick and render nowhere. That is not true. T yeah, I, I just want to... <laughs> what are you trying to do to me? I know right tick it. Alright, so we just go down here and do entity manager. Nope, 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 sorry. Go over here. We do entity manager dot tick. There we go. Um entity manager um used to manage to manage all entities. Commit that and push it. <sighs> okay. Okay, that's all. I finished that. 
What else do I have to do? I made the key manager. I made the animation. The scene. Scene manager. Oh, I know. Timer. Okay, so the timer. We can do that now, right? We're at 30 minutes. That's kind of long. But, you know, that's actually, that's not hard at all because I already made it. So in the end, all I really have to do is make the document, is write the documentation, right? Yeah, I made this a while ago. This is actually a really cool program that I made. It's just a timer that, um, it's an object, not static, and you just make it, you tick it, and start and stop it. It's really cool. I made it a, a while ago. Anyways, let's just write some documentation. Okay, so I did some already. So, didn't mean to do that. So AMT is the amount of time in seconds. Didn't spell amount correctly. And of course, if you're stupid, you need to know what the start method does. <laughs> it starts the timer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um checks if the um um re uh is the timer running or is it done um determines if the timer is done counting this course stops the timer can only be can, can only be invoked if the timer is running otherwise it returns the request resets it of course Yeah, I already wrote that. Okay. Ticks the timer. This method must be called in the tick method of whichever this timer, whichever object or scene this class is in. Whichever in the tick method of whatever object this timer is in. The beginning time. I forgot how I made this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I completely forgot how I made this. How did I make this? Was I really this smart to the point where I could make this? Wow. I'm just an idiot now. <laughs> idiot who codes. Alright, anyways. Um, so we made the timer. What was the other thing? Ah, yes. Mouse manager. So. Let's make that, I suppose. Pose, and then I can finally get onto my voice assistant because that's, yeah, that's really all for the for this um, game engine. Great new Java class, mouse manager. Now you might be saying, hey, well, Lurkin, this this has been a very short prog project, but technically it really hasn't because this is the combination of all of my knowledge over the past summer and beyond because. Um, I'm combining all of my, all of, all of my structures from all of my different projects. Anyways, mouse manager, do I make it here? Yes, I do. So we can just, uh, doop de doop This code is now mine. It already was mine. I'm talking like an idiot. Don't even, 
want to type it out, I'm just copying this and putting it there. Alright. Game done. It should be an engine. What are the errors? Give them to me. Engine. So, just, I love this Alt Shift thing. I'm just say engine now. Perfect. There we go. Done with that. Let's go. Commit. Mouse manager and timer class. Let's go. Let's go. I'm done. I'm done. I finally finished a project on during the summer. No, I didn't. I'm being an idiot. I forgot to initialize it. Uh, God damn it. Alright, so. Let's just go over to the game. And let's go over to the key manager where this key manager has been sitting alone all this time. When you say public static mouse manager, call it the mouse manager. Go down to the pre initialization and say mouse manager equals to a new mouse manager. Let's go. And then go over to the initialization and get the canvas, I believe it is. Whoops get canvas uh, dot add you know what let's check with my rebounds project which I did this copy this over right here there we go and do mouse manager dot tick and there we go we're done with this game engine let's run it make sure there's no errors Fuck. <laughs> Why is Entity Manager no? Entity. Ma oh. Easy fix, easy dubs. As Glado said, the, the easiest solution is usually the fastest. No, the best solution is usually the easiest. Let's go. I'm done. Let's go. Finally finish this very happy and it's a lot more organized than here you can see the progress we went from this to this to this beauty game engine is all done commit no 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 commit done with project let's go commit and push why is my voice like this Push that. Let's go. I'm very happy right now. Final commit. We can go over here. Go to my GitHub. Copy this and start spamming it in my school chats. Let's go over here. Spam this. Okay, I'm being a dick right now. I'm going. <laughs> Thank you for watching. This has been such a fun project. See y'all later.